It was a wonderful winter day, and even nicer. Every winter, it was like this. In the winter, Benny was allowed to visit his grandpa, who lived in a small village in the mountains. Benny was in such a hurry again to the snow that he wasn't even in the house yet. He always hangs with his friends, Fritz the Tomcat, Robin the Bird, and Elmo the Duck. When Benny was still not back in the late afternoon, his grandfather was at the door yelling, Benny! Benny! But there was no answer. He never listens to me. Come on, Benny! His grandfather said, Come back home! It's already late and soon it'll be dark! Benny had become quite tired and walked home without complaining. Benny said goodbye to his friends and wondered if they'll be allowed in the house. If mom found out they were always in the house, they would scold me, said Benny, grinning happily. When they were in the living room, the grandpa said to Benny, Look what I have cards for you while you were playing with your friends out in the snow. Benny beamed with joy. Oh no, Fritz said. It can be a very dangerous gift for you. After dinner, Benny sat down comfortably, and so did Fritz and Elmo. Tell us a story, Grandpa, Benny begged. Please, last year you always did that. The grandfather thought about it, and because it was snowing and stormy outside, he decided a ghost story was just perfect. And he was right. The story was so scary that even Elmo was afraid. Benny was also afraid, and he started to feel uncomfortable. When the grandfather noticed this, he said quickly, But of course, in that reality, there are no such things as this ghost. It's just a weird at your house. And before you can start complaining, let's all go to sleep. Benny protested, but his grandfather left him alone. And that was a good thing, because when Benny was finally in bed, he let off steam slowly and he fell asleep. It had already gone around in the village that Benny was visiting his grandfather. Benny's friend Balto came to visit. Benny ran to the window full of joy. How come, Balto? Said Benny. I just need my new rifle. The grandfather then said, You better not take it with you to the village. You should only play with it when you're in the snow. Why are you the house? Benny asked. Well, the other kids might be afraid when you're holding a rifle. The grandfather responded. I'll put it safely in the cupboard in case you need it. Benny was disappointed. When you come home, you can play with it, scolded the grandfather. 
Now go play with Balto. He didn't have much to say because Benny was already outside with Balto. The grandfather sat in his rocking chair and fell asleep shortly afterwards. It was an unusually harsh winter that year. Even on the streets, there was hardly any snow. Benny and Balto arrived at the village. Oi, Balto! hissed Como. You're hanging around with that kid again? How pathetic! Como, you're just jealous! said Balto. And Benny couldn't stand it. It really was the same every year. Visiting the village again, Balto and Kamo couldn't stand each other. Everyone, come here! cried Miss Miller, the baker's wife. Everyone looked astonished. You all have to come here! I hear wolves! There are wolves here! That's nonsense! said the hunters who happened to be in the village. There have been no wolves here for 50 years! But you're wrong! said Miss Miller. It was definitely a wolf. A few days ago I saw a program about wolves on TV. They howl exactly like that. Please, have a look because you are all hunters. The hunters weren't watching animals that day, but they were bored. So they decided to look and saw Bato and Como. We've seen these two before. Town's really bad. You're really fussy, Bato and Como. Bato and Como, of course not saying twice. And when they said goodbye to Benny, they were racing so fast that only the hunters at the exact right height followed them. Benny had heard enough. He ran home as fast as he could. He wanted to deliver the news to his grandfather and friends. Balto, Como, and the hunters continued to run off in the woods, away from the village, but no wolf was to be heard or seen. Well, we better get back home, said the hunter. Benny was wrong. I would have been very surprised to see one considering the wolves had long since died out in this part of the country. Come on, let's go! The hunters turned around and marched back to the village, a little annoyed and disappointed. The hunters stopped. Good heavens! There it is! Said the hunter leader as he stood in place in shock. Balto! Como! Go get him, boys! Bato and Como ran after the howling wolf. Suddenly, however, they found themselves at the end of a deep cliff. The two huskies standing over the big gap didn't dare try to jump over. Meanwhile, the hunters watched over. Come back! They shouted. Even if the wolf can jump over the gorge, it's too dangerous for you both. We'll have to think of something else to do. Tired and disappointed, Bato and Como trotted back to the hunters. Back at home, Benny told his grandfather very excitedly that the hunters heard a wolf. Hmm, muttered the grandfather. There may as well be wolves here. Although, the last I heard one, I was about your age. But now, since we haven't had such a severe winter for such a long time, you probably won't find anything out there. But we should be careful anyways. Can I go outside with the gang and tell them everything? Benny asked. Of course. Just don't go out too far from the house. I'll be right there. Benny grabbed his wooden rifle and went looking for his friends. Come here, Momo. Let's have my other rifle. I'll tell you when we find the others. Benny replied. Why only then? Asked Elmo, but Benny gave no answer. Robin had overheard the conversation and came flying over to them. 
have to hurry. But you don't even know how to fly. Stop fighting, said Benny. I have to tell you two something very important. The only way we found Fritz. Otherwise, I'd have to say everything twice. Okay, said Robin. But Fritz is not in a very good mood today. I know, to my knowledge anyways. Fritz had hardly eaten that day and crept around the forest, very hungry. Benny, meanwhile, had given up on finding Fritz and told Elmo and Robin anyways. Fritz lost his patience as he gave up on searching for mice that day because he discovered the fence. If I already can't get anything to eat, he thought, then I want to at least have a little bit of fun. I'll scare him. Yipe! The bird yelled. Benny laughed. You're gonna have to come up with something better if you're gonna scare us like that. Robin, still startled, said, Yes, he is on the road today, but man, that fur ball spooked me. Oh, come on, Benny said. What wolf? Fritz asked, and on the way to the village, Benny told Fritz the story of the hunters and the wolf. But meanwhile, back at the house, Grandpa came out and looked around, as he discovered Benny far from the horizon. I told him not to go too far! Grandpa scoffed. He got up and ran over to him. Benny! Benny! You should wait for me! After all, an old man isn't a train or a bus, he said. But we just wanted to go to the village, Benny said, defending himself. I want to know if Baltimore and Combo caught the wolf already. Hmm, is that so? asked his grandfather. Let me come with you then. To see if Balto and Como actually caught the wolf, Betty and his friends arrived in the village. Did you find the wolf? Asked Benny. I think we did, said Balto. But then he jumped over a cliff. Yeah, and the hunter said to not follow him because it's too wide, added Como. Could have made it though. Perhaps, said the hunter leader. But the risk was too great. You could have been hurt. Anyways, everybody stay home tonight. You people better go home. Tomorrow we'll keep searching. In the shortest time possible, the village was deserted, and the grandfather, Benny, and his friends went back home. Together, Benny and his grandfather thought about what to do with the wolf when he came near the house. And they, too, had an idea. The next morning... Benny and his grandfather were outside immediately after breakfast. Is there something new? Said Robin excitedly. Yes. Cried Benny. Grandpa had built a trap for wolf. And it works like this. Said the grandfather. I shoveled the snow with a hole, and then I put it on the net. The net is practically invisible, especially to animals. And when the wolf walks over it, the snow goes into the hole for a hundred kilometers. And why the wolf doesn't walk over it? It's very easy, said Benny. You'll turn over to Elmo, because the wolf may like to eat stuff, and then lure Elmo to the trap. You can fly over it so easily, but the wolf is too heavy and it will definitely break. So what? said Elmo. My grandpa always yelled that he can do it, but nothing happens. I'll do anything to help. Fly, Robin! Fly now! I can already hear the wolf! Benny shouted, and indeed, when the wolf already came quite close to the grandfather's house, he was more and more hungry. The wolf howled so loudly that Robin had to look for him. He had already found him.
As promised, almost fun to the lake. Yum yum, roast duck, said the wolf. Now, Elmo, Robin shouted. Run now! And Elmo started walking. Don't turn you back! The wolf doesn't notice you're not really afraid of him! Never fear, Elmo, Benny exclaimed. Grandpa will definitely take care of you. Hopefully, said Elmo, because he thinks the wolf could catch him. Everybody shivered with fear. Still going, said Elmo. And at that exact moment, when the wolf jumped right when he was about to grab him, he noticed that he fell in a hole. The hunters had set out in search of the wolf that morning. They haven't been far enough because they quickly heard howling. Hurry up! Said the hunter. He can't be far off! When they saw Benny, who in the meantime had climbed up to the tree along with Fritz, they shouted, Don't worry, Benny! We'll help you! You don't have to help us! Said Benny. Robin, Elmo, and Grandpa have already lured the wolf into a trap. He's down there! The hunters were amazed. The moment the grandfather went out of his house, he went to tell the hunters that they should get the wolf out of the hole. But that wasn't necessary anymore. When the grandfather reached the hunters, they already tied up the wolf. The hunters scolded the grandfather. How dare you catch the wolf alone! That was far too dangerous! But it was fun! The grandfather exclaimed. And dangerous it was. Well, for him at least. But he survived it too. And now the hunters were also happy. Off to the village, said the hunter, and they all went off. Everyone came running, and so did Balto and Como. Benny and his grandfather told everyone about their adventure over and over, and now that no one was afraid of the wolf anymore, the entire village gathered together for a big celebration.